Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Reaction and Review UK, round two of September month. If you didn't catch the last video, let me just quickly bring you up to speed. It's my birthday in September, and throughout September, I'm watching eight movies that I personally love and adore. So, last time we took a look at The Goonies, so what are we watching today? An all-time classic. Seriously, I think everyone has this movie in their collection, and if you don't, then why are you here? Our movie up for review today is Monty Python and the Holy Grail. I fucking love this movie. I <laughs> just want to point something out here. Um, I know I mentioned this in the first episode, but people have been saying, like, isn't the whole point you're supposed to watch movies you've never seen before? I did say in the very first episode, which was the Might More from Power Rangers review, you can find it on YouTube, I did say I wanted to stand out from Helsing's series. So what his rule is, it has to have been he's never seen them or about 15 years. My ruling is... I've never had to have seen them, or it's been five months since I've seen them. Just to help it stand out. And even Helsing himself was a good idea. And I can't remember the last time I watched this, so yay. Easily one of the most quotable movies in living memory. Seriously, right off the top of my head, I can probably think of five quotes from this movie. Bring out your dead, we are the knights who say nee, I fart in your general direction, what is your favourite colour, and three, sir. It's a, it's a difficult one, but... Does this classic still hold up? Is it still as fun as I remembered it? Or is it really starting to show its age? Well, let's find out. That in mind, everybody, grab some of the drinks. It's time to kick back, relax, and join Muddy Python for their quest for the Holy Grail. This is the only movie I can think of that actually has like a fake out right at the beginning. It's really clever. I mean, if you can think of another movie, then, you know, let me know, of course. But, <laughs> that was a good fake out. Yeah, it's too bad that whole coconut thing never caught on. Maybe it's because I'm white and nerdy. That explains the lack of acting talent in the Harry Potter movies. That vicious chicken of Bristol is a real bitch, I should tell you that much. Tasty though. Thank you. A point is reference. Isn't that the same song that the minstrels are playing for um, Sir Robin? <laughs> this movie is fucking stupid, man. <laughs> but I love it all the same. One problem this movie has is the whole one person playing multiple roles. I mean, for example, here. John Cleese plays Tim the Enchanter, but he's also playing Sir Lancelot, and both characters can't occupy the same screen at the same time. Now, obviously, this trick is easily done now with lots of After Effects and movie magic, but it just shows a time that it's a bit difficult to have one person play multiple roles, because, unfortunately, Lancelot's got his helmet on for the rest of the time Tim the Enchanter's here. Just thought I'd point that out. I like how the movie doesn't have a single ending, it just kind of stops. Because <laughs> you know if it kept going, this movie would have got even sillier. But anyway, so that was Monty Python and the Holy Grail. Let's just put a stop to that there. Um, I will keep the music going, but you never know, I'm a copyright laws for it. Right, okay. This is how you make a spoof movie. This is how you make a, a spoof or a parody of a certain genre. And I think... Um, Holy Grail was satirizing all of the sort of the epic, like King Arthur, medieval kind of movies, tales of days gone by and whatnot. And it really kind of nails it. It does this really quirky, off the wall Python humor, and it does actually translate into a full feature movie. This runtime on here is an hour and 25 minutes. So it does last. I mean, some shows that get a movie, they usually drop the ball, or it's not watchable, and it can't do anything past like 20 minutes, for example. But yeah, I already thought this was good. A couple of nitpicks, though. I mean, one of the nitpicks is, um... Well, it is funny, and it does show the guy's comedic talent and ability, it... 
doesn't seem like a good idea to have them play multiple roles in the movie. I mean, for example, um, where John Cleese, who plays Sir Lancelot, also plays Tim the Enchanter, and they're in the same scene together. They're never really seen on the screen at the same time, which is kind of silly. I mean, the bit with the French taunting, you know, it keeps doing a back and forth kind of thing, and that works. But the problem is, you know, you've got Tim the Enchanter talking, and there's just a guy you can clearly tell is not John Cleese in a Lancelot costume wearing a helmet. It's just... Nah. But these days, these this trick can be pulled off better. I mean, there's lots of, like, editing software, After Effects and whatnot, or movie magic that can sort of fix that problem. But this was, like, a product of, I'm guessing, the 70s or 60s. So technology wasn't around back then. So you sort of forgive it. And the same same with um, Sir Robin. I mean, I think it's Terry... Not Terry Gilliam. You know, just check. It was um, Eric Idle. I'm going to get killed, for, gonna get killed by um, Python fans for getting that wrong. But anyway... Um, same scene when he's playing like Brother Maynard, you don't see him and Zerubin in the same scene, and it's just it's just silly little things like that that kind of like hamper the scene. I mean, if, if the movie was made today, they had the effects where you get two people on the same, same screen at the same time, so that's not really much of an issue. Just it's just a nitpick, like I said. It's a real shame that spoof movies are not this funny anymore. I mean, all they are now is just oh look, it's a reference to somebody, or oh look, it's Judge Dredd or Alvin the Chipmunks. It's just. Holy Grail actually does have its own jokes, its own gags, its own quirky bullshit that a lot of these spoof movies don't have anymore, which is a real shame. I personally uh, enjoy it more than, say, Life of Brian or The Meaning of Life. I mean, I have seen either two, but like I said, this one is my personal favourite. Everyone's got a fa- I think everyone has like a real quotable scene or a joke that they love. Mine, personally, is The Knights Who Say Knee. And above all else, um, yeah, I really fucking enjoyed this movie and um, I think you guys need to see this if you've never seen it before then now's a good time you can find this movie on DVD really cheap as chips now I mean you can probably find it on play.com or Amazon maybe you find it on Netflix or maybe it's on YouTube somewhere although it shouldn't be but what are you gonna do yeah if you can find this movie give it a watch this is um, a two disc special edition which comes with a second disc full of like extra goodies and whatnot but yeah it's passing the starter test, it's still funny, it's still watchable, and like I said, you guys need to see this. I would go on about how good the movie is, but you already know how good this movie is. There's not much needs to be said about it, so we'll just cut off there. With that in mind, ladies and gentlemen, we come to the end of round two of September month for Reaction and Review UK. I have been Random, take care, and I'll see you all in the near future. Peace. There is nothing I can say that hasn't already been said. <laughs>